ask me questions about uh, the stock market uh, and those, but uh, we can uh, review any of the uh, of the charts involving commodities that you'd like. So I've been prop trading, which is a whole different um, animal. So if uh, if you're a prop trader, I'll be kind of speaking a little bit toward that to a, to a large degree. Uh, all right, it looks like we can take a look at gold first. Um, let me ask you, uh, Cassandra, did are you uh, are you trading long term in gold? Are you are you a day trader? Just give me an idea. I mean, most of my visions are uh, you know over the next few days, next day, the same day. Uh, I know you like gold, but do you like um, what do you like about it? <laughs> are you a day trader or are you a day trading just beginning? Okay, Cassandra, I got you. All right, well, let's take a look at. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I won't be able to help myself uh, to uh, let you, as you can see, my charts are very, very simple. Um, uh, Mr. Boxer has a lot of lines on his chart and they're they're very effective. They've got, uh, you know, you can draw your channels in and so on. Uh, I see that he, um, he, uh, you know, he uses a lot of the standard um, analysis that I do. We're gonna, let's take a look at the, at the gold chart here. Um, let me move that around. Well, here, here we are. Uh, I think what what impressed me when I took a look at this chart earlier today is it kind of looks like a a gigantic. Now this is a this is the daily chart of um, of the gold. And when I um, when I when I trade, I always look at the daily chart so that I get a uh, a feeling of what I call the undertow of the market. Uh, uh, sometimes when you're trading during the day, something happens that you can't quite understand. And usually if you take a look at uh, some longer term avenues like the 60, uh, 60 minute or even the daily, uh, the answers will be revealed because uh, the market kind of gets affected by an undertow. And also it helps me with what I am, um, what, what I um, think is probably the one of the most ignored features of trading and that's position sizing if you're like me uh, I, I like to be in the market there are a number of different traders I only have a, a certain amount of time to trade I can't trade all day and usually my windows are just a couple of hours of trading before I have meetings and something to do with running the business so if you're in that particular situation um, uh, you want to uh, I like to take as many trades as I can uh, using responsible triggers. And I have several of them. I think if I can advise you, uh, Cassandra, since you're beginning, uh, you, you need to identify uh, your best triggers. And to do that, you need to first, uh, first, of course, identify the trigger and then back, look at it through time, back test and see which are the triggers that are, that, that are most effective in getting immediate pop in the market in your direction. And uh, that's the most important thing. Once you, if you can get a pop in your direction, you can take a quick profit on some of your, uh, on some of your exposure and leave, uh, leave the rest on. In other words, I, I never take a position in, in uh, a trade in the, in, in gold, let's say, unless I'm taking two, at least two contracts of gold. One I treat as a, uh, as a, um, as a scalp. And the next one I, I let run according to a couple of the things that I'll be showing you along the way here. So uh, in looking at this, I mean, it looks like a gigantic head and shoulders bottom. Um, the question is, has it already um, spent itself or, uh, or not? So let's, let's look a little bit uh, further back. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't give us much. This is a year's action in the gold. So, uh, you know, gold is a bullish chart. Uh, However, uh, you can um, be a little bit concerned with, uh, with the fact that we're matching the high from a year ago and that we seem to be having some sideways movement. But when you get an accumulation like this over, this is the eight bar exponential moving average. It's really what guides a lot of professional traders, including me, this, uh, this is the eight bar exponential moving average. And, and if you, uh, you can see that when a market takes off, for instance, right here, it tends it will tend to ride 
uh, that eight bar exponential moving average on the north side, like it is here in gold on the daily chart, and then uh, moves and then it accumulates as it is sideways. Now, if this thing breaks out, you've got a you've got a lot of uh, distance on the north side here. Uh, but it's going as you see, it's having a little bit of trouble. It it, it made an attempt here uh, to see what uh, what would happen if it approached this past high last year. And so you're 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 in a uh, you're in a position of angst right now in the uh, in, when you're trading short term. Uh, you'd love to see it break out when you have a long position. But you really don't know because when you have a sideways movement like this, an accumulation, um, you, you really never know. Generally, uh, it's a continuation pattern if it stays primarily above the eight as it as as it does here. You can see. So I would expect that it goes higher, but until it does, uh, then uh, there's no way of telling. Let's take a quick look at this. Um, I'm going to see exactly where this market is. You can see right here where. Uh, where it's caught a lot of people long here and then come back and uh, anybody that's bought uh, uh, this breakout over this particular high last year is now uh, in a slightly losing position and is a little bit nervous about uh, what to do. And, and I would share that nervousness, although I do believe that eventually you'll be in the right direction. So uh, although I wouldn't take a big position here on the north side until I see um, this eight bar exponential moving at average start to uh, ascend higher again. So uh, let's take a shorter look at this. Um, I'm looking actually right here at the micro uh, um, uh, at the micro chart because for some reason, uh, I'm just learning really myself, uh, Ninja Trader. And I have been trading it literally for a year, but I only, uh, you can see how simple my charts are. Um, and, um, and so I, I've learned the basics, but one of the things that I haven't learned is how to get rid of a mistick uh, so I have a mystic in the regular chart and the normal gold chart, but this is exactly the same chart in the micro. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the five bar exponential moving average just to give you an idea of uh, of, of what you should look for when you trade. Uh, as a as a swing trader and a day trader, um, you know I I, I kind of like the five, the forty. I, I again I. Um, I like to be in the market when I can. So I, I trade the two, I trade the five. Uh, when I have a little bit more time, I, I'll trade the 10 and so on. Uh, but right now, this is the most recent um, action. This is a part, this is today's action. And you can see we've, we're, we're just continuing to, uh, this is that the line that I guess I drew uh, just earlier right here on, the, on that top from last year. So you can see how we're, we're even on a daily basis, we're, we're playing with that, uh, you know, with do, are we breaking out or aren't we not breaking out? You can see the run that you had here on a breakout and then uh, and then the m market uh, descending as uh, as it moves higher. But this I want to point to a particular formation that I like to see, uh, Cassandra, because if you're new to this, um, this is a this is one of our. Uh, and our loaded gun simple trading plan. Uh, and I call them simple trading plans because it's simple. Uh, I like to use that eight bar exponential moving average as my guide. And, um, and this is actually the 34 exponential moving average, which I use to, um, to stop me from uh, getting shaken out of trades. And I'm gonna show you what I mean right here. So, Although I've given you a general analysis to be careful in, in the gold right now, although I do see it moving higher, uh, that would just be my opinion. Uh, but I never I never invest on my opinion. I only invest on what's in front of me. This, this formation right here is a very interesting formation. Um, it's a trigger that I like to see with a with, with uh, one or two candles that, uh, that have small bodies where you have a particular indecision here. And then you have a, a stronger move uh, through the uh, through the eight bar exponential moving average. When I cross from one side of the eight bar to the other, I really like that as an indication that we, we may be moving in that direction. And you can see also that this particular bar, even though it's not real very dramatic, um, it, it has taken out all the previous lows here in the in the recent past. And so I kind of like I would be taking a um, a, a short position here on this trigger, but I would be taking it very lightly. 
why? Because I consider the 34 exponential moving average a particular barrier uh, toward movement. As you can see, it, 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 it did hesitate here uh, until it moved th through it. Um, but, you know, sometimes these movements can be limited to, um, to, uh, to, to the third to reaching the 34 but not beyond uh, so I like to take when I when I take this position on the short side I like to take uh, let's call it two positions and again I'm going to emphasize again to you position sizing and with the micro positions and the mini positions that you can take in gold gold is only one is a, a, a normal contract of course is 10 is 100 ounces this is only 10 ounces of gold so uh, to take two positions two contracts and and, to, and take it at, at um, uh, to have 20 ounces of gold under uh, under uh, control. Uh, that's an that's really a nice. Uh, there can be pretty good money made in it, but it, it's not going to uh, result in much of a loss. If this market, if I take this position on the short side and I take it right at the let's see eight. I'm looking here if, if there's any questions. Eight twenty four moving average thirty four. Uh, it's not twenty four. It's thirty four. Um, it's a Fibonacci number. And there's a couple that I can use, but uh, I'm just uh, really want to get into the analysis here for uh, Cassandra. I, I, want to, uh, I want to keep my stop above this formation. This is the two candle formation that I like to use. It's a small body and then a, a, a large, a much larger body through. This is about the minimum difference I like to see. This is barely a signal. I would be taking on two contracts. When I start the day, I say to myself, I'm going to take on anywhere from two to six contracts, but I'm going to treat them as 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 two. In other words, if I take six, I'm treating them as three and three. So here I would take a minimum contract. Uh, I mean, I, I am bucking a, 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 a nice upward movement here uh, that happened during the night. Uh, we, we are accumulating, but the fact that we're not accumulating over the eight and we seem to be ba battling back and forth above, if all this accumulation was above the eight, um, you know, I could really be confident, a lot more confident that I'd be looking for a breakout to the upside. But uh, the fact that we are undecided with the eight where we are, uh, this thing could break either way. And it wind up breaking down. Easy to, easy to say now that I've seen it, but that's my reasoning when I'm looking at it. So I'm looking at this and, and I'm saying, hey, it's, it's, it's giving me my requirement. Uh, the small body um, hesitation candle, as I call it here, uh, on one side of the eight, and then a punch through the other side of the eight, taking out all these lows. I like that on the long, on the short side. But the fact that we're we're, we're battling against the thirty-four, I have an issue uh, with with believing that it may not get through here. But I do have enough for a scalp. So uh, I usually measure the body here of the uh, of I, I usually measure the body here of the extended candle, and I project that uh, as my scalp. Um, sometimes not the whole thing. If I, in this particular case, um, that would take it right against the 34. So I may take my scalp about 60% of that. Okay. And then I move my, uh, uh, and I, again, if I take two positions here, which I would two contracts, I would take my first one out with a short gain. And then, uh, I would move the stop. I would have placed the stop for both above the formation. And when I take my, when I take my scalp, I always move my stop down um, on the remaining position or positions down to break even. So um, and and so I would have taken my scalp with the next candle, had a break even on my second. So now I'm sitting in a position where I cannot lose uh, from the standpoint of, of uh, having taken my profit uh, on the short on the on the short scalp. And then um, and let me say something again about taking two positions and treating one as a scalp and one as a runner. One of the big dilemmas, as you, if you've known me for any reasonable amount of time, my, my site is the disciplinedtrader.com. To me, it's all about discipline and discipline is all about the mental game and which is most people ignored. So for the first, uh, I'd say 20 years of my online of 10 years of my online career um, from about 2000 to actually 15 years uh, to about 2015, uh, it was, I strictly helped, traders, not with analyzing charts, but helping them with their mental and emotional uh, quandaries. And one of those mental and emotional quandaries is, should I let this position run or should I take the profit that, that, that God's given me 
uh, in, in, in quickly. And that's that's a dilemma that the traders, if they cannot come to grips with that when they first before the, before the before the situation starts, then it becomes a quandary when it happens. Those quandaries result in poor uh, trading plan management. You know, that's when you start r jumping off your trade. You know, you hear something on on uh, on CNBC, and you're thinking, "Oh my God, this thing could really dump," and so you stick with it instead of following your plan uh, and taking a profit, whatever. So, my idea here is that what you want to do is treat one as a scalp and one as a an extended a runner. I call it a runner. So, here we have a position here, and, and again, I like to be in the market as much as I can be, um, and and so. Um, when I get into a position like this, where uh, I like the idea of it being short, because I do have a short trigger that I've tested and like, but I, I don't like the fact that um, we're against the there are uh, there, and we're against the thirty four, and I'm fighting what's what's a very strong uptrend. This very this very well could just trap people and bring it up. So this is a very small. I got to take when I I got to take my smallest position. So I'm going to when I say I start the day with either I'm going to take two positions on every trade three, four, five, or six. So I have that range. When I see everything go in my direction, and we'll probably see that as we look at some of these charts, I, I may take a fuller position. But here is a minimum position. And I'm usually taking minimum positions. Look, the the other thing that's, uh, that, that's underestimated in trading futures is the leverage that you get. So, all right. So I, I would take two positions here. Uh, I would put my stop up here. I would take my scalp here, which I would have taken, move my stop to break even, and then the market would be coming down. Uh, and and I would I would follow this until I until I broke to the other side convincingly. I can't get into everything about my trading plans, but I will say that that when I break through the trading plan, I like to see at least a couple of candles uh, convincing me it's the other direction. But again, see what's happening here is it's going in my direction over the eight and now we're coming back up, but we're against the 34 on the other side. Interesting. This is where it, it stops me from being shaken out. Okay. Um, now, if, if you were shaken out here um, and uh, again, you probably wouldn't go long. This is a very similar um, again, hesitation with a move through the other side of the eight, but you're against the, the 34. You wouldn't take that on a long side, but you may want to take your profit from here to here. As you get good at this, and as you, as you get good at some of these simple movements, you may want to wait. Uh, and I always wait for the close. Another thing, Sanja, when you're dealing with, uh, with, um, when you're dealing with, um, candles you want to wait till or or, or bars you want to wait till the bar closes uh, especially with candles the candles um the, the japanese candles uh, who invented candlesticks about 500 years ago japanese farmers um they always waited for they only believe they believe that the most important part and the only thing worth really talking about is the open and the close in, in a period of time that you're looking for or looking at. So in this particular case, uh, as long as I would uh, respect the close of the candle, uh, th this would this would not have taken me. I never buy in the middle of a candle. Uh, I always wait till the candle is closed. So having waited till the candle is closed, we're now back below the 34, which is a barrier that that, that you want to get through, that you don't get shaken out. So here I'm short, but I would not have reversed because I have that barrier here. Okay, so, uh, and, and look what here, look what we got here. We've got a, a weak, not, not W-E-E-K, but a W-E-A-K shooting star formation, which is very uh, bearish. And uh, again, we're below that 34 in this particular market. So it kind of gives me another vote for bearishness. I still don't like, um, you know, having this if, if I'm, I'm still not convinced we're going south from here but I'm, I'm in a position where I'm ready to move one way or the other and, and take my profit but look all of a sudden uh, we have a um, we, we're back below the eight and now we're back through um, moving in the eight anyway I want to kind of show you a couple of the techniques that I use I, I just want to show you because I use very simple proven techniques I don't have a lot of lines on my chart as you see um, so let, let's continue down. So look look at this trade. This would have been a trade that would have taken you all the way down here. So we're talking about, uh, what is that? Uh, 2196 all the way to 20. This is a, you know, a $20, uh, 18 or $20 move right here. And, and 
you know, you even if you stayed as, you know, you're here above the eight, one, two, three, this kind of playing around the eight, uh, I, I would likely have been out here again. Uh, we're late. Then we, w w this is lunchtime and, um, and we, you, you, we can move sideways a lot in lunchtime. We got that here. Listen, I got what I needed from this trade. So that's, but, but what about now? Don't know. I mean, if you're, if you're, again, I would be looking, um, uh, I could trade both sides of this market because again, in the daily chart, I showed you that we're right at that. Uh, we're testing that, uh, that high from a year ago. And the market is, uh, has been confused about it for the last, uh, looks like, I remember seven or eight trading days. What was it? Let's take a closer look at it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, almost two weeks of trading. And again, uh, we trapped a lot of people here, trapped again. This is, this is today's action. This is that big move up and then the move down again below that line. So that line is, um, so you can see uh, I'm getting some help when I analyze the, the, the longer term chart with the shorter term chart. Here's that breakout line. We're underneath it again. Um, really nothing much to do un until you get some sort of a, a movement here. So uh, again, uh, I'd, be, I'd be trading both. I think you can trade both sides of this market, but responsibly, I would be taking a minimum number of, um, of, of trades. So that's, that's my thinking on the, on the gold market. Uh, let's see, who, anybody else have a market they'd like to take a look at? Uh, in the commodities, uh, and I will do that. Otherwise, I'm going to go to silver, which is another market. Hey, I think she's uh, she's listening to me already, and she's not even under my umbrella. Uh, let me. I'm 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 assuming it's Cassandra, and and I'm saying she. If if I'm wrong, uh, I apologize. Let's see. Here's the. I always had the gold and silver together. Here's the. Um, here's the silver chart. Um, the silver is, of course, uh, uh, it's a very heavy chart, a very heavy contract. So be a little careful when you're doing, when you're trading this. They, they also have the micros and minis in this also. So uh, you can trade small amounts. Um, here's a daily chart of silver. Um, uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's a lot more active and a lot more volatile. It's gone in the last year. Uh, is that, uh, let's see, if, let's take a look at the, what it looks like for the year. Um, so uh, the, the, the good news here is that uh, you've got some action and that's what you want in a commodity chart, but I'm not so sure where it's going here. Um, uh, again, this is the eight bar exponential moving average. Look at these tops, one, two, three, and, and uh, recently four, and, and you can see the retraction uh, after that chart, you can see an attempt here. Uh, let me spread this out a little bit so that you can kind of see what was happened most recently. I mean, look, look what's happened here. You opened here in this day. This was uh, last week at this time, five, last Tuesday. Market moved higher dramatically, uh, again, to probably test this high or some high. It's trying to move higher. Uh, of course, we've, had, we've got the nice movement here, but uh, it backed off. The next day, it, it looks like it opened in this area. Uh, and then um, and then moved dramatically lower. So it's really having a tough time um, moving higher. And now we're on the other side of the eight bar exponential moving average, although we are still on the good side of the 34. So I'd be cautious with trading this um, uh, if you're trading on a daily basis, but on the, on the on a shorter term basis, let's take a look at the five. Um, you can see you see right here, this is a very similar, um, a very similar uh, signal. It's not as pure as what we saw before. In other words, a hesitating candle followed by a movement through the eight bar exponential moving average. I like that, but you know, th this is a, it's kind of weak because I like, I really like to see, um, I like to see very um, much smaller candles here. I like to see a much bigger difference here. But again, uh, the fact that we have a, a tail here uh, that trapped, a good, probably a good amount of people here. Um, there's a good reason to believe we probably will move lower here. So again, this would be a minimum position for me. And because I would put my, I would have my initial stop up here, um, it would definitely be a smaller position because this is this is a pretty good distance. Uh, if I'm looking, looks it looks about 10, 10 to 12 cents. Not a lot really for two candles in the in the in the silver market in a five minute chart. 
five minute uh, candle chart. But again, you see enough here so that you would be able to get your scalp, which is what you want. Then you want to move to break even. Actually, this did not touch that break even. And you would have continued on through here uh, at a, a really nice pace. Um, uh, just another, you know, this is a mess. And one may, may say, well, well, you, well, you've gotten out here, not gotten out here. Again, I'm, I'm usually looking for two breaks, uh, uh, two closes above uh, the 34 slash eight. And here you have one close above and then no consecutive closes. One close, not sure what this is. Here's a consecutive close. This would have um, this would have had me think, you know, I maybe maybe want to take my profit here. But since I've already taken a scalp, and since you know this is quite a mess, what I do is I put my I put I I put a stop. I would be leaving my break even stop because it it, it actually happens right above these. Uh, if if we weren't close to the break even stop, what I do normally in a in a situation like this is I will put uh, I'll just take a um, a small, uh, just a line like this over my, uh, I would be take, having a stop in this area. Uh, in other words, if it breaks this, uh, the, the highs of this accumulation here, then I'm willing to get out. But until then, um, there's a lot of reason to believe I may go lower and, and we certainly did. And here's another uh, situation where you had a relatively small body. Again, I like to see them smaller followed by a more dramatic move through the eight bar exponential moving average, believing, m making me believe that if you weren't in this market, uh, that this may be a pretty good place to, to get in, especially once we broke this low. Um, so uh, even on an inter five minute basis, since it's a five minute chart. So uh, we're moving lower. It looks real nice. Again, we have some noise above the eight, but the fact that we're uh, we're below the 34. I've got a nice profit here. Willing to stay in to see what happens. Um, uh, sometimes uh, if it's toward the end, if this is happening toward the end of the day, I want to preserve my profit. I would be putting my, and I see this kind of accumulation. Again, I put up my line up here and uh, this way, you know, look, maybe I'm so be stopped out early, but I've got a really nice profit. I go on to the next trade. I think the more you trade, Cassandra, they're going to, the more you see, um, uh, yeah, you can go, of course, go short. Short is, is usually a better deal than going long. And you can see the, you know, the drama of a short trade. Um, so um, Cassandra, if I were you, I, I probably would consider, I'm, I'm not sure what, how, what the size of your account is, but if it's a small account, especially five, 10, $20,000, you may want to consider, I would consider prop trading. Uh, are you familiar with prop trading, Cassandra, at all? Um, I don't do, I'm not doing stocks, uh, Mr. Dish. Uh, prop trading is where you can um, actually um, um, trade their money and get 90% of the profit. Uh, there are some fees along the way, which I'm doing the lecture on uh, later this week. But the idea is that uh, why risk your own money uh, when you could be risking somebody else's money? Yes, the leverage is the same. You're, you're, you're trading the same charts and the same commodities that you're trading here. Um, I'll, um, in fact, right now, in fact, let me, let me show you, uh, if you could post it in the chat, um, the, if, uh, um, uh, the, the, I know that we're not uh, doing much in the way of offers today, but I did want to show you, uh, what I had. Um, if you go to the discipline trader.com forward slash prop, the discipline trader forward slash prop, here's a course that, uh, that we sell for $497. And if you use the code March 26, no space, March 26, um, then um, this will only be $197 for you. But this will teach you about what prop trading is and some of the, um, some of the positive nature, especially in small accounts. I wrote a paper recently on the death of simulated trading, uh, why waste all your time simulated trading when you could be uh, when you can be qualifying for being funded there's two steps a qualifying step and then a um, and, and then and then the funded step where you're actually making the money from your profit so there are rules and regulations uh, but they're not abusive and um, you know but, but why risk your own money when you could be risking their money so normally it's 497 if you put um, if you put in this coupon code, Today's date, March 26, no spaces. 
uh, instead of 497, it's going to be $197. So this is uh, this is good for today. Uh, this, this coupon code of March 97. So you may want to consider it and learn a little bit about prop trading if you're not already familiar. Okay, just thought I would give you that as a possibility um, because really when you're trading with scared money or money that, uh, you know, that's sh what I call short money, uh, small money, it's, it, can be, it can be an issue. Um, okay, we've taken a look at uh, gold and silver a bit, uh, both in, pretty much in the same situation. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing and I'm not doing in a video, though I would be looking to buy on dips uh, as I am. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a commodity man. Let's take a look at the crude oil. Um, I see we have a, somebody wants to like look at the crude oil. Let's look at the uh, the, the day chart in crude oil. Um, let's see if I I think I have a. Uh, hopefully this is not going to help. Um, I, you see this line, this is a missed tick. And um, I think I, hang with me here. Uh, I have not figured out in, um, in, in Ninja Trader how to omit those missed ticks. But um, I think, uh, let me look at the, let me look at QM. I think that should help us here. That's gonna give us, this, that's the, my, that's the, uh, uh, the small, that's the E-mini crude oil, which I love to trade. It's a half contract. And um, let's look at what that looks like on a daily. Well, it, may, it may not have the mystic. Let it low. There we go. All right. Let's take a look here at what's going on in the crude. Uh, let me get rid of all of my trade um, identifications there. Just bear with me. Let's go here and... Get rid of that noise. Okay. All right. Let's take a look here at this is the crude oil. And we are looking at a year's action in crude oil. Uh, you know, listen, this this could easily look like topping action, uh, but I wouldn't be so um so fast. Uh you know, I, again, I am a guy that loves to be in the market. I'm I'm really old school when it comes to um, to the way I analyze. I'd rather um, uh, and and so I'm showing you um, you know very basic but very effective um, chart analysis that I think um, you know if if you do what I do oh, sorry wrong line uh, you can benefit by it as I, as I do making things more complicated I just think takes away from um, from your ability to trade. Here's one line here. Let's look at this past. This is what I usually do when I take a look at a long-term chart to kind of measure that undertow. Well, you can see what's happening here. Um, I would draw this line and this line for, um, you know, for, for potential. These are the obvious lines. And it's amazing how supply and demand, how, how resistance and, and, and uh, so support and resistance is really what the market mostly pays attention to. And you can see it uh, right here. We're, we're hesitating uh, right now against these this top right here. I love to draw ranges. When you trade, you need parameters. And oh, however you arrive at them, if it's in a responsible way, uh, it can give you a framework of where you want to go as opposed to dreaming that something's going to go uh, crazy high or crazy low. Now, you want to be realistic and look at your past highs and your past lows and, and look at what has been consistent. Um, you can see how we attempted this, this high here again here. And I mean, even though it's last year, it does, it's, it does seem to have some, a, a particular influence on the market. So um, again, support and resistance, you want to draw those lines. My friend uh, Marina uh, is very big also on it. And, and uh, Harry, who you just saw, uh, he would definitely be, he would definitely be drawing this channel <laughs> just from the few minutes that I saw him, uh, you know, in this area, I like to copy this if I can. Uh, I like to uh, uh, look at parallel lines. I'll, I'll do it. Let's, let's see right here. Um, well, it's not giving me a way to do that. But in any event, uh, let's look at another ray here. I'll draw the obvious ray. 
But you can see how, um, you know, how the market is in a nice channel here. And um, it, of course, again, it's having trouble in this area. So not only is it having trouble in this area, but it's also uh, against the high of the channel. So um, I would say that my, if I were to use my experience and guess what would happen here, I would guess that we would see sideways movement for another week or two, of which would be tradable, of course, in a, in a small, in a, in a um, lower time frame. I would be, um, I would be waiting for this market to go sideways until the one thing that, that I like to do is um, look at the midpoint of, of these kinds of channels. Um, um, I'm, I'm drawing it quickly here, but I would like to see uh, I would like to see this market uh, come back to at least the midpoint of the channel before releasing higher. If in fact we do that on a daily basis, and this is more for long term traders. Um, so, if we just move sideways without changing price, this ascending line would eventually uh, be met by the sideways movement. And I would say at that point, I would be looking at my shorter term charts and favoring the long side. When I say favoring the long side, I mean, uh, I, I mean, uh, dealing with, um, again, my position sizing. I wait for my short term trigger, but depending on the strength of that undertow, I may put on an extra position. So instead of having two contracts as a minimum, that day, if I was trading, if I was trading crude, I may be looking higher. But there's an equal chance here that we go lower. So let me take out these, um, these lines because I, I, they tend to confuse me. Uh, when I'm when I'm looking at the other side. Now I'm looking at the now let's look at the short side. Um, you've got some highs here that are being tested. This right here, uh, I don't have the thirty. I didn't. Uh, let, let's draw my. Um, let's draw the the eight at least the eight bar exponential moving average so that we can uh, we can see what's going on here from the way I look at things. The EMA here, and let's change that to an eight. Let's change the size of the, the thickness of the line to at least three, and let's apply it right here. Okay, so um, we've got, um, th see this, this is this, this is the kind of signal that I like, uh, a, short, a, a small candle with a big candle, but it didn't break through the eight, so it's meaningless. Here it is again, uh, uh, here's two, small candles, what I call what are spinners, even dojis are the best total indecision, followed by a move higher. And look what it resulted in, a movement higher. Even though it didn't, even though we were in a sideways accumulation, this was the trigger. This accumulation was, was what led to the, the final uh, the final movement lower. Now here is a here is a trigger, uh, the, what I just showed lower. And look, it resulted in, in grabbing uh, likely grabbing a uh, a scalp. So again, I'm always scalping, but then if it doesn't work out, I want to be out of that second position. So here I'd be scalping, would have taken my scalp in this area, and I would be right. I would still be long here if I was in a long term position uh, of gold uh, of, of uh, the crude because um, you know we're still uh, above the eight, and I kind of like again. I let the eight be my guide. Look at this. Here's another sh small body compared to the big one, leading to this. Okay, small body leading to this. I'm showing you what we call, what one of the triggers of what we call our loaded gun simple trading plan, which is our basic trading plan that I instruct traders how to use. There's a lot more to it, but I'm just showing you some of the initial triggers. So um, uh, I'm, I'm showing you enough to, to kind of be dangerous probably. But uh, so in this particular case, uh, I, I still would be uh, favoring the long side of this uh, in a longer term position, uh, but I would, I would probably go lightly uh, I, I would not initiate a new position here until uh, until we break above um, this area. It looks like about 83 or 84, of which uh, you've got pretty clear sailing uh, to the to the $90 level. So uh, there's a lot of space up here, but whether we get there or not, we're going to have to get through some of these barriers that we've already demonstrated um, has some interest. I mean, what's happening here is that you have you have uh, institutions and so on that are that have. Um, Positions defending these these marks. Now I can go through through that at some later date, but uh, I've only got about twenty minutes left. In, but wanted to show this. Let's take a look at uh, at a shorter term chart. I'm just trying to influence you to use 
position sizing, uh, if you're like me that likes to be in the market, even though there's an expression, I'd rather be out of a market wishing I was in than in a market wishing I was out, which is true, which, which only goes to say that when you get into a market that you have to get in responsibly. But there are eight, what I call A plus triggers, and there are A and A minus triggers. I am willing to, to a large degree to get in on A minus triggers. These are triggers that uh, maybe only work 55 to 60% of the time, as opposed to 67 to 70% of the time, where an A plus trigger would give you that pop. In other words, I want to see at least my I want to see at least my scalp getting hit, um, and and that would that would be the resp that would be uh, an A plus trigger um, that um, that would deliver that on a two thirds basis. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the five minute bar chart here and uh, a candle chart, and you can see how it, it works. Now, I will say that any trigger that you test will always be more effective on a longer term chart than it is on a shorter term chart. I, I don't like people trading the one minute candle chart. It's the, I think it's the worst when it comes to valuing back testing. Two minute is, is much, much better, even though it's just a minute more. Five minute is great. And as you go along, um, you know, a daily chart will respond to some of these triggers uh, that I like to use even better. And I, I know, I'm not, maybe they're edges, maybe they're 3%, 4%, but that's that's big in the course of a lifetime of trading. And here's a doji leading to a nice big move higher, which uh, which if you waited long enough, gave you that. Here's a another bunch of small bodies followed by a movement through the eight, only barely, but leading to a nice move. Here's another one here. And here's a, look at this one. Here's a, here's a very small body. You know, with a with a movement lower, so I make life very simple. I make it very simple. Uh, I don't have the thirty four in here. Some of the other things I like to use because I can't give away everything. I'm only giving you some of the initial basics of our loaded gun trading plan, which uh, which you can email me uh, if you go to the disciplinetrader.com. Uh, go to the uh, go to the um, question area um, or the help area, or whatever, and, and you can send me a message, and I'll send you information on that. But look at this, boom. Uh, uh, very, very nice, even though it um, it would probably would have been a minimum position for me because we're butting up against that line that I drew from the, that had some importance to me on the on the daily chart. But look, once we broke through it, wow, look at it, very nice, very nice. And look at how it adheres to uh, to staying on, on its, on, on the correct side of, of the eight bar exponential moving average. And look, here's almost a break, here's a breakthrough. Uh, you know, you didn't know this was follow, but you go, you're wondering here, oh my gosh, I'm getting a little bit nervous here because listen, we have a low here uh, and, and it would not have been a bad idea. In fact, I likely would have taken my, uh, I may have taken, especially if I had other things to do. Listen, you can't let trading control your life. You want to be responsible. But if I had a lot of things to do and I had, I would, that, this is enough for me. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging. I've challenged this high this 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 support low here uh, looks like we may have that support holding and then a run up. It didn't happen, uh, but if I had time, I would be following this. And that 34 exponential moving average uh, would have been up here and not broken. And, and therefore, I look at it as a guardrail. And I would have been in for the rest of it, which would have just been, um, you know, a little bit more profit. But is it worth staying in all this time for a little bit more profit? when you could have moved on to another trigger somewhere else in another commodity. I like to trade different commodities where, so time to me is, is a very big thing. So I, I like to make sure that, um, you know, that, 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 that I'm, I, when I get the most out of a move and it's showing me something like this, where, where, where I've, I've, I've got a, I've got a, a, a hanging man here. Um, the opposite of the, when I see that big, bar that breaks through here and get a lot of people short just to make them losers immediately. Um, and, and now we have some sideways and, you know, th this looks like it's going to hold. So if I was trading right now and wasn't on this, I, I may take a small position on the long side. Um, I would have to be looking at the different uh, trigger. Um, and because of that, I don't see a trigger here. I wouldn't be in it. But if you were long here, I think right here, I'd rather be long than short. Okay. So if you're going to trade right before, right after we get off, <laughs> and uh, you may want to look at that. All right. Maybe we have time for one more. We've got about the, about 12 minutes left. Um, 
Do I add volume of each bar? You know, that's interesting that you say that. I'm really glad you asked. No, I don't. Why? Because I don't like stuff on my chart. I don't like looking at things. Um, but but many of the people who I train and who have, uh, especially those that have had experience, uh, they, and, and they love the volume chart. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get to the same conclusion. What I've shown you here, uh, when you see these kinds of, of patterns like this, this is the ES. Um, look at this. Here's the ES, okay? Uh, uh, so a bunch of small bodies, a nice movement through the ACE. Look at, look at where, if you had some patience, look at where it led. Look at this. And, and so um, I, I can tell you, without looking at the volume, that we had a pickup in volume here. Okay. Um, and of course, the drying up of volume is what you want to see when you want to try to exit a, a, a position, a, a drying up of volume in your direction or a, a, a candle moving against your direction in a high volume would, would get you out. But I've got a feeling I would see it go through the eight. And so there are a number of ways of doing it. So my answer to you is no. However, I have no problem with you having another confirmation because I like to be in the market. I, I want to see, I, I, but, you know, extra indica extra um, extra things that you, indicators that you put in front of you, um, uh, the hurdles that you have to jump before can keep you out of trades, especially because I believe that there are two or three really great indicators that give me 80% of what I need as far as confirmation. I don't need the other 20%. And sometimes... Um, you know, that, that a volume indicator can be that extra 20 percent. And that's fine. Sometimes it can, can keep me out of a trade that I wish I was in and shouldn't have been in, maybe. But but I counter that with with knowing when to go strong in a position. Again, position sizing, position sizing. And with the advent of micros and minis, there's no reason why uh, one can't get into trades uh, without all of these windows to have to, and all these hurdles to have to cross. I mean, I've shown you, and here's another, you know, and another similar, even though this is not it, um, where you have a situation where you have a, a small candle followed by a big one, likely would have waited till here because of the 34. But look what happens once it passes this accumulation. Now, a lot of, a lot of traders, um, just as experienced as I am, would would probably draw a line that, that looks a, a little bit like this. Um, you know, here would draw a line and say, hey, if we break this area, I'm gonna be short, you know? And, and okay, I'm, I'm good with that. But it, 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 again, there's a number of different ways to, to come to the same conclusion. I would definitely be looking at a short position here. Okay, now um, you can take a look at this and say, is no, it's not. It's not because there's no, I like a lot of diff distance between, a lot of difference between the two candles. This is, uh, I'd like to at least fit three or four of these small bodies into this to, for me to call it a signal. But we got it here. And look, we, we, we were richer because of it here. Um, another, can, another shot here that would have gotten me short and would have gotten my scalp. But, you know, when I go short here, my scalp would have been not breaking through this previous low, but to uh, but to get in reasonably before it. I, I don't like to even, you know, if I see a bunch of, I'd be taking my scalp right in here, very small scalp, but that's plenty of money. Move my stop to break even, I would have been out of it uh, with the second position, even though this went nowhere, I had my scalp because I was, I used a trigger that I know very well. Here's another trigger um, on the long side that I would have waited again because I'm going through the 34. I'm not convinced. We're again, we're against this high right here. So I'm not going long here. And boom, it took me enough candle, only a couple of candles to see a, a, a situation that I like. The doji, total indecision, followed by that movement through the air. Beautiful one. Again, taking my scalp here and then re doing the rest here but you know and here if you're not in already you know here's here's one if you took your profit somewhere in here on this candle uh, i would have been in again here uh, only to see uh, this happening so um yes what is your target scalp size i, I just uh, mentioned it to you I, I look at the body of what i call the extended candle and i'll take uh, if it's a strong market and, and a very strong, I'll, I'll take 100% of that. And but 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 I've learned over time when you do, start doing this, take 80% of this distance and extend it 
here, 60%, 80%, but, but not the whole thing. And the, the less you ask from a, from a market, the more you'll be benefited by it. So I hope that helps you there. Uh, uh, Randy Disher from, uh, from Monk. It's like dish. All right, let's see. Maybe we've got uh, a chance for one more. Uh, this is the S&P. If you want to look at the, anyone want to look at the NASDAQ, which is always a kind of a fun market. Um, uh, if you can put up that, uh, you know, for those that want to learn about scale, about uh, prop trading, um, I've got uh, a $497 course, uh, an introductory course to it to learn how to uh, adjust your trading plan for prop trading uh, so that you can uh, you can stay within their parameters. Um, just go to the discipline trader dot com uh, forward slash prop the discipline trader forward slash prop and use the yeah I'm going to go to the I'm going to write that in here real fast the discipline trader forward slash prop and use the coupon code uh march 26 which is today's date no and and instead of 497 you're going to pay 197 i want you to make that happen thank you i appreciate that following me up with the coupon code there so let's take a look at the nasdaq and we'll see what we got here because i, I want to get on this trade when we get off oh, that's not enough time let's put four o'clock right let's look at the nasdaq i'm going to look at the mini nasdaq because i got that same uh trades the same chart but look at here Uh, again, if you want information on uh, my loaded gun simple trading plan, just uh, send me an email. Go to the disciplinetrader.com and go to the contact area. Just say, hey, send me some some look see on on the loaded gun. Is what I'm I'm calling. That looks like a gun, doesn't it? A little trigger here with a uh, with an extension. Here it is again. Look at that. Look at where it looks. Now here you can get you know you're going to have some losses. Here's a trigger to go long. OK, but then you would have a reverse trigger here. So you would have lost on my system from here to here. Well, here's another trigger. Look at this. In, indecision followed by the movement down, okay, through the eight, you get long here, put your stop up here, put your me measure that stop there, uh, uh, Disher. Um, and um, and so you would have had your limit in, you put in your limit order to, to buy one of your two uh, contracts here, and you would have taken it, put your, put your stop in up here, you would have been stopped out here. In fact, you would have gone long here. And then uh, you would have had your limit order to sell here, you wouldn't have gotten it. And then you would have had a reversal signal here to go short. So you, you would have taken a loss on both positions from here to here. So you would have sold four here because you were long term. you took a loss here, but look what happens. You kind of stick with the system because it can many times lead to what you're looking at here. Look at this movement, all of safety. You would have been, you know, wow. Well, and you're still in this trade. Um, now, I will say that one of the things that I don't like to get too far from the moving average and, and down in here, uh, if I was actively trading, I may have taken my profit right when I'm get, I get this far, maybe even right in here uh, when I see this reversal pattern. Because, look, you've got, you, you, you got enough here. you got a big trade. You're way past the eight. What happens when, tra when trades get far from the average like here, they tend to snap back toward it. So why not? understand it and stop dreaming stop the dreaming and start the execution of what you know works okay so um i think we may have uh, just a few more minutes so yeah i like this this is the five minute chart let's look at the daily to to kind of get a uh, again i like to look at the daily but look at this uh i mean you've got to believe that we're we're on we're, we're, we're continuing on the long side but again uh, you know, look at what's happening here. Uh, we're starting to see a the market looks like it may want to roll over, but it, you know, tried to roll over here didn't work. Uh, so is it a roll? One of the rollovers is going to be a nice correction. And as I was mentioning to the newbie that I, I talked to at the beginning of this presentation, uh, the the new person that is uh, Cassandra. Um, you know, you, you don't want to make anything up. You just want to go with whatever the flow is. And look at this. This is even on the daily chart. Here's that signal again through the eight. And here's that signal again on the short side. And here's that signal again on the short side. And here's a, a, here's a, here's a losing signal on the short side following a buy, a, a buy here. Here's another losing signal. You know, but would you take this trade right here? Uh, again, you've got a small body movement higher that I like through the eight. But look, you're right against a, you know, this is a tough 
trade to take, even though, so sometimes you take it, sometimes you don't. I can teach you when to do that. Okay, so look at this. I mean, gigantic. Well, do I like this? Sure, I like the long side, but I would be a little bit, you know, I would be a little bit cautious. I would be taking minimum, minimum positions on both sides, but I would definitely be looking for this market to turn around, give us some sort of correction. Even this would be fine, um, but I'm not seeing it quite yet. So that is about it on my side. Um, David, I hope uh, hope I've um, satisfied a few people with the way I'm, I look at things. I have a very basic and effective and uh, really it's a, it's a winning way of looking at things without making it complicated. OK, so that is uh, that's the, my presentation. Again, if you're interested in the discipline trader dot com forward slash prop, you can learn about prop trading. Just use the code March 26 and uh, for your for your discount and we'll make that same. All right. Don't try. Do. I will try. I wish you didn't say that, Cassandra. You're making me nervous now. Uh, all right. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Well, thank you, David. And uh, welcome to the who do we got next?